I have a long and extensive relationship with improved cartridges, particularly the Ackley improved cartridges. I really like some of the AI cartridges and I think some of them are complete waste, but it comes down to personal preference and expectations mixed with a little bit of a dose of reality. I didn't want to touch on the subject of improved cartridges, but it's reached the point where misinformation about these cartridges has just reached epic proportions. Even a wise, experienced YouTuber that I follow, with a lot of common sense usually, put out a video about Ackley improved cartridges that was just really full of some bad information. Another popular YouTuber claims that he gets an extra 300 feet per second out of his uh, 280 AI. <laughs> yeah, sure you do. And another popular YouTuber claims that P.O. Ackley stated that only the 25 caliber and 7 millimeter cartridges see gains. And that's also just isn't true. <laughs> Many people fail to understand that P.O. Ackley wrote volumes on the subject of improved cartridges. If you really understand Ackley improved cartridges, you know that there's special steps that a gunsmith needs to take while converting a chamber to Ackley improved, and there's special considerations for fire forming brass. If you actually read Ackley's material, you'd also understand that not all Ackley improved versions have goals of additional velocity like you think. For a lot of cartridges, the goal is as simple as prolonged brass life, which is important to many reloaders with today's brass prices and availability. So I'm not going to make this a really long video by covering the history of Ackley improved cartridges, and I'm not going to go through the reloading process with you because I assume that you're already an experienced reloader if you're even attempting to deal with improved cartridges. In this video, I'm going to dispel some misinformation about Ackley improved cartridges with facts and then try to end this video with some opinionated commentary on the practicality of these wildcats. And we'll start this video off by delving into what is probably the biggest myth surrounding Ackley improved cartridges. And that's, do Ackley cartridges cause case head separation? Well, in a properly done chamber, just the opposite is actually often true. In a proper chamber, you can actually increase the brass life of many AI cartridges. You know, sure, the initial fire forming process does move some brass as you form that shoulder. But after that, brass stretch is extremely minimal on these AI cartridges. But notice I said proper chamber, and that's the major distinction here, and we'll talk about that right now. In order to properly set up an Ackley improved chamber for rimless, uh, beltless cartridges, in addition to reaming the chamber out like you normally would, the barrel actually needs to be set back in order to shorten the chamber up. Ackley specified a four thousandths to six thousandths uh, shorter neck to shoulder junction than the parent case. So basically, when you load virgin brass into an AI chamber, it should have a slight crush fit when you turn that bolt down. That crush fit, per, you know, prevents loss of head space during the fire forming process. And remember, in your Ackley improved chamber, factory brass is head spacing off the neck shoulder junction, not off the shoulder datum line. But here's the problem with many Ackley improved chambers. A lot of them were done by lazy or inexperienced gunsmiths who just ran a reamer down the chamber and skip the step where the chamber needs to be shortened, which is really important. Now you have a gun with headspace issues, which results in destroyed brass, light primer strikes, 
and possible damage to the barrel. Trust me, there's a lot of these poorly done Ackley conversions out there right now, and I've, I've seen probably dozens and dozens of them. So instead of confusing most people with my go, no-go gauge explanation, basically a standard go gauge is the Ackley's no-go gauge. Rather than do that, I'll just physically show you the brass differences between factory brass and an Ackley improved case. You could see that the improved case has this cool 40 degree shoulder and lack of uh, case taper, but ignore that. The important thing here is that this neck shoulder junction right here on the Ackley improved case is slightly lower than on the factory case. You could see the shit, this, this, uh, Neck shoulder junction is at a higher place than it is on the Ackley Improved case. Basically, when I load this virgin brass right here into an improved chamber, it'll have a slight crush fit to headspace, and that's what you want. So, after you fire form one of these factory Sammy spec pieces of brass right here, the neck junction on your fireform brass should be slightly lower than the factory neck junction. If your case comes out like this, you're lucky and you have a really good Ackley improved chamber. A chamber like this will greatly minimize brass, spread, brass stretch during fireforming and give really good case life. But if the neck junction on your fireform brass is above or at the same place as the neck junction on factory brass, you basically have a bad chamber that is stretching out the fireform brass too much, and it's going to cause a lot of issues. You know, you could use techniques like jamming the bullets into the lands uh, while fireforming or making a false shoulder, but that's just a, ba a band-aid for a crappy conversion job. What we have here is a cut cross section from 35 Whalen Ackley Improved Brass. This piece of brass has been fired four times, and you could see that the case web is perfect because it was fired in a properly done Ackley Improved chamber, you know, compared to the case web on the Virgin Brass right here. You know, it looks pretty damn good, doesn't it? You know, I, I get outstanding brass life out of the 35 Wayland AI, and that's really the only benefit of doing it. So, in my mind, this myth is busted. In a properly in a in a properly done Ackley improved chamber, you just don't see case head separations. You know, after the initial fire forming of the brass, where you form the shoulder. The brass actually moves very little after that, and you'll find that most Ackley improves need very, very minimal full-length sizing or trimming throughout the brass life compared to a standard cartridge. So in my mind, that myth is busted. The amount of velocity increase you'll see out of an Ackley improved conversion will greatly depend on the parent cartridge. You know, I've seen 25-06s, 25-06 AIs, you know, get uh, 150 feet per second gains. And, you know, with most 35 Whalen AIs, you're barely lucky to get uh, 20 or 30 feet per second gains. So do your research first, which is easy to do because P.O. Ackley, did a lot of the work for you 60 or 70 years ago. So get a copy of uh, Ackley's Handbooks for Shooters and Reloaders and see for yourself. A kindred spirit of mine that was kind of a mentor to me hunts almost exclusively with his 6mm-06 AI and his 338-06 AI. He learned gunsmithing from his father in the 60s and has more experience with 338.6 than probably anyone I've ever met. You know, he, he's getting crazy good velocities out of those chamberings. 
you know, maybe I'll I'll try to talk him into doing a 338.6 video with me in the future. You know, if, if you don't like the 338.6 now, you will after hearing him talk, but he raves about the improved versions of those cartridges. But the bottom line is you're going to see some great velocity increases out of some AI cartridges, and you're going to get hardly anything with others. And what you also need to consider is that your skill as a reloader will ultimately determine what you get out of an actually improved cartridge. Guys that try several powder and primer combinations are likely to wring a little bit of extra performance out of improved cartridges than guys that just rush through the process. But uh, don't expect too much. Be mindful that some AI cartridges get more velocity benefits than others. In the big picture, you're usually lucky to get about 100 feet per second of velocity increase out of an actually improved cartridge. To me, that isn't a huge velocity increase. So this myth usually isn't true, but to some people that extra 100 feet per second is worth the trouble. And now let's move on to myth number three. There's a lot of people out there who claim that fire-forming, actually improved cartridges waste a lot of bullets and powder. And if you believe that, then you're doing it wrong. Many people fire-form brass without using a bullet at all. I mean, they, they use the cream of wheat, wadded paper, or the wax technique to fire-form their brass. I've successfully used the cream of wheat method many times over the years. But if you've watched and actually paid attention to any of my reloading videos, you've heard my slogan, never waste an opportunity to get load data. On most of my hunting loads, I have load data for both virgin brass and fired brass. And you could do the same thing with improved cartridges. I use data from my fire form loads to develop hunting loads to use with virgin brass. I mean, it makes sense, right? Properly done AI chambers are actually made to fire standard cartridges, so don't be afraid to do it. Most of the AI rifles I've owned shoot sub-MOA with virgin factory brass, uh, you know, loaded right by me. But, uh, you know, I have load data for standard cartridges in my AI rifles, and I can actually confidently hunt with factory brass and not be at a disadvantage. The only really difference... The only real difference is that I lose a little bit of velocity on the virgin brass, but that's not really a big deal for hunting. I find that most proper AI chambers shoot factory brass pretty damn accurately. Some reloaders find that new brass shoots absolutely excellent out of uh, an AI chamber. So fire forming brass doesn't have to be a waste of bullets. You've probably heard the rumor that Nosler really screwed up the 280 AI by creating their own specs that deviated from P.O. Ackley's specs. Actually, as impossible as it sounds, this rumor could be true. At the very least, Nosler's SAMI spec, the drawing of Nosler's SAMI spec, does cause a lot of confusion. And before I go any further, just let me clarify that I really have no dog in this fight. <laughs> okay, I'm not taking sides either way. I'm just making you aware of uh, controversy that's developed over the years with the 280 AI. So Nosler decided to standardize the 280 AI and created SAMI specs for it. But Nosler's 280 AI SAMI specs might headspace differently than the original 280 AI specs. So... Now, thanks to Nosler, we might have two different 280 AI specs. Nosler confused a lot of people when they did this. Um, on the other side of the coin, people say they're looking at the data a little bit wrong, and in actuality, they're both the exact same chambers cut the exact same way. And they could be right. I don't know. But uh, I've seen commercial 280 AI SAMI spec rifles headspace fine with all ammo, even all the factory ammo, 280 ammo out there. 
And I've seen some Kimber rifles with 280 AI SAMI spec chambers where you couldn't close the bolt on factory 280 Remington ammunition, you know, so you could fire form it. So chambers seem to be all over the place right now on the 280 AI. And there appear to be two different types of reamers and dies now. So I no longer load for the 280 Ackley Improve. So I really have no skin in this game. I'm just giving you this information. A really good friend of mine shoots a 30-06 Ackley Improved, and he's getting 3,000 feet per second with 180 grainers out of that 30-06. And he's doing it with 15% less powder than a 300 Win Mag. And, you know, he seems pretty damn happy with those results. And in the end, I think that's all that matters. But I personally don't load many of the improved cartridges anymore. You know, there's just so many cartridges on the market today that all you need to do is pick a bullet in a muzzle velocity you want and then se select a rifle in that cartridge. You know, the reality is that there's really no need to wildcat cartridges in 2022. I'm also not the type of person who thinks more powder and velocity is always a good thing. For instance, I think that the 30 6 is just perfection the way it is. The powder capacity efficiently pushes my preferred bullets at just the right velocity for hunting within 400 yards, you know, but uh, with really manageable recoil and muzzle blast. Given that, why would I want to increase recoil? Also, that gently sloping 17 degree shoulder on the 30-06 is just one of the smoothest feeding rounds ever invented. So, why would I want to put a sharp speed bump on the shoulder and have it feed rougher? So in the end, the term improved is relative to the user. To me, the 30-06 Ackley improved is less desirable than a standard 30-06. But to my buddy, the improved velocity makes the AI a better cartridge for him. So it comes down to personal expectations. Also be mindful that there's other improved cartridge families out there besides the Ackley. You know, with the uh, the Gibbs cartridges being the second most popular right now, and of course you have the, uh, the Brown cartridges also, but this video was specifically about Parker Ackley's creations. Well, I hope this video shed some light on some of the misinformation circul circulating throughout YouTube and magazines about Ackley improved cartridges. You can reach me with any questions or comments at DesertDogOutdoors at gmail.com. Thank you for watching, and as always, good hunting.